Britney Spears has a book coming out. And, um, you know, everything going on in the world, this is the good news at least, that all of the most insufferable women in the country uh, apparently have memoirs coming out. We have Jada Pinkett Smith has a memoir. Britney Spears has a memoir. Now we just need one from, I don't know, Joy Behar. And uh, we'll really complete the trifecta. But there's one revelation from the book that's getting a lot of attention. And uh, here's NBC News. We're back now with a major revelation from pop icon Britney Spears. In an excerpt from her new book called The Woman in Me, provided to People magazine, Spears said she had an abortion as a teenager after a pregnancy with Justin Timberlake. For more on this, let's bring in Kellen Rosenblatt. She's NBC News' youth and internet culture reporter. Great to have you with us. Good morning, Kellen. So this abortion bombshell is really what everybody is talking about so far in what we've seen from the book. What exactly does she say happened and how does she feel about it now? Good morning, Savannah and Joe. So Britney Spears talks about being deeply in love with Justin Timberlake at the time. And although they weren't really ready for this, she said she'd always anticipated starting a family with him and that they were going to share their futures together. So when he said that he wasn't ready to be a father, she said it was a really difficult decision for her. She said she has since agonized over this decision and that it's been a really big challenge for her. And, and fans are really empathizing with what she says in this book about being really conflicted about having this abortion after falling pregnant in her either early teens or, or, or sorry, her late teens or her early 20s. And has Justin Timberlake responded at all to the book or to this claim? People Magazine had reached out to Justin Timberlake, but no reps have responded yet for him. All right. So the free Britney movement, of course, was a huge part of her being released from her conservatorship. How are they reacting to this revelation? Yeah, so fans online are really heartbroken for Britney. They say, you know, Justin Timberlake has in the past been under scrutiny for some of his uh, treatment around Britney Spears or how some of that relationship shook out. So now fans are really reassessing some of the music from that time. They're saying they're really mm. heartbroken over the song Cry. Um, all right, so this is good news. The free Britney movement is on the case, and that makes me feel much better. You know, the idiots who demanded that a mentally unstable woman be freed from her conservatorship because they saw a documentary about her and assumed that you know, they saw a documentary and that was enough for them to sum up like years and years and years of court cases and everything else. And they knew everything they needed to know based on that, that we need to free Britney. And now they're chiming in, which is, which is fantastic. This is an interesting story though. And it's a sad one. Apparently Britney Spears at some point as a young adult, I, you know, maybe 19 or 20 uh, is the assumption had an abortion at, she says, Justin Timberlake's insistence. Now, a few things here. Number one, Britney Spears was, we must say, a multi-millionaire at the time. So the idea that she had to kill her baby because she couldn't care for the child without Timberlake's help uh, just doesn't fly. She was a very wealthy woman who had an abortion rather than care for her child. And uh, that's what happened. And she's responsible for her own choices, trying to pawn this all off on the guy or acting like, she was a destitute, desperate, poor woman with no other choice or whatever. All of that is wrong. Not that an abortion would be justified if she was poor, but, but she wasn't. So that's the first thing. Now, now, that said, if the story is true, then Justin Timberlake carries an equal amount of the blame, as it was equally his child, and they're both responsible, uh, which needs to be said. So, uh, but you know, there's, there's this thing that happens in, in the pro-life movement where... Uh, pro-lifers don't want to be seen as villainizing women, and they especially uh, and and they want to be able to reach women, especially before an abortion happens, be able to reach out to them. This is what this is what uh, pregnancy resource centers are all about, which is good. It's like you want to be able to reach women, especially when you're, when you're dealing with a woman who uh, is contemplating abortion but hasn't gone through with it yet. Then the approach is certainly not to shout at them and scream at them and heap guilt and all of that. Because if you do that, then it's just, it's going to send them into the arm. That's what the abortion industry wants you to do because it sends them in, in, it sends the woman into their uh, demonic arms and pregnancy resource centers. And you've got sidewalk counselors that go to the abortion clinics. They know all of this and they're very good at reaching out to these women um, and not, not, sh not sugarcoating what the issue at all Um but at the same time, reaching out in love with grace and patience and all that. And that, that's all good. But there, it, there's a segment of the pro-life movement that, that goes too far 
in wanting to completely absolve the women entirely of any guilt whatsoever and and to paint and to to present it as though the women are just as much victims of abortion as the child as if they have no agency and i i'm seeing this um and it's true that that it is true that oftentimes women are are exploited by the abortion industry uh, are lied to and we should keep that in mind um as well but I'm, I'm just seeing that with this story as well. I'm seeing some pro-lifers that are, well, this is all about Justin Timberlake. He's the villain here. Let's talk about him. Let's not talk. Well, no, hang on a second. She, she, might have, she, was, she was a 19 or 20-year-old woman, filthy rich, and uh, decided, well, if Timberlake isn't on board, then I'm going to kill the child. I mean, that, that to absolve her of, of guilt is not the right approach either. I mean, the answer is that this is, it, it, every baby has a mother and a father. And if both the mother and father are on board with killing the child, then they're both, as far as I'm concerned, equally to blame. Um, but what I really want to focus on is, is, is the sadness, the heartbreak that we're hearing about. Uh, Britney Spears says she's still torn up about it. The media re- is reporting this as sad news, heartbreaking news. We just heard that, that people are heartbroken, fans are heartbroken. And it is very sad. And it is heartbreaking. Anytime a child is killed, it is sad and heartbreaking. Um, I, I don't have any, any problem with people taking that tone when talking about abortion. That's the appropriate tone. It's a terrible thing. But it's interesting that people who support abortion, people who defend a woman's quote-unquote right to abortion, will describe it this way. You know, we talked about this recently. It, it, it's, and it's something that the pro-abortion side, if you're on the pro-abortion side, you should really think about that. And I know that there are, in fact, uh, Plenty of people on the pro-abortion side who watch this show, because I hear from them. So if you're in that camp, ask yourself this. If abortion is not the killing of a human child, then why is it sad? Why is it such a mournful, difficult subject? The October 15th tax deadline has just passed. I know many of you might be dreading the stress of filing your taxes. Filing your taxes can be a long, excruciating process. But if you fail to file, you'll start to uh, pile up penalties on your tax debt. That's why you need to check out Tax Network USA. The team at Tax Network USA has a track record of success. They have reduced tax debt for numerous clients, totaling over $1 billion. Whether you're looking at a $10,000 or a $1 million tax debt, they can help you with a settlement. It doesn't matter if you uh, haven't filed in one year, five years, even a whole decade. Tax Network USA is equipped to secure the best settlement for you. The experts, uh, attorneys, and tax professionals at Tax Network USA can help resolve all tax cases no matter how they started. Don't let tax debt control your life any longer. Take the first step toward resolving your tax issues by visiting taxnetworkusa.com slash Walsh. That's taxnetworkusa.com slash Walsh today. I mean, either way, um, no, it's either, it's, a, it's, a, it's a either or, okay? This is a, it's a binary choice. Either abortion kills a human person or it doesn't. And if it doesn't, which is what you claim, then there's nothing sad about it. If the quote-unquote fetus is a lifeless, inhuman clump of cells with no value, then an abortion is no different from getting like a wart removed. And why would anyone talk about a wart removal like it's some tragic thing? Why would a woman still be mourning the loss of a wart 20 years later? It's absurd. So... If you see this kind of story as sad, then you must realize at some level that the child is not a wart, that the child is not some lifeless growth, but is indeed a child. And if you recognize that intuitively, then how can you support abortion at all? I mean, how can you defend the killing of a, of a human child? Okay, the only thing that could ever make abortion defensible is if it is not the killing of a human child. That's the only thing that can make it defensible. But, um, and even then, I, I wouldn't say that it's that it's defensible. I've talked about this before. That, you know, the, the claim that it's not a child, but merely a potential child. Well, abortion still is not justified, even if what we're de- dealing with is the potential. But that's the only way you can even get halfway to, to making an argument in support of abortion is first you have to uh, make the case success, successfully that the child is not, is, is not a human child, which you can't make that case because it's ridiculous. 
Um, but if the child is a human child, then then killing a human child is wrong self-evidently. It's like it, it, it's the definition of an evil act. It's the kind of thing where if that's not wrong, then I don't know what the word wrong means anymore. If it's not wrong to intentionally, deliberately kill an innocent human child, then what what could possibly qualify as wrong? You've taken the worst kind of thing and you have um, excused it. And so in so doing, you have excused everything else down the line before you get to the worst thing. So that is really the dilemma. Um, and the only consistent position, if you're, if you're pro-abortion, uh, you, you have to see abortion as like a happy or at least neutral thing. But I think most people... Even if they claim to be pro-abortion, they intuitively recognize that it is sad, it is heartbreaking. And if your mind is telling you that, that it's sad and heartbreaking, you should really ask yourself why. Thanks for checking out this video. If you'd like to listen to my full podcast on the go, you can check out The Matt Walsh Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.